Hey everyone, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. I welcome you all in this video where we are going to discuss about the ghost pepper. So I hope that you already have heard about the ghost pepper and those who are hearing this for the first time. So let me tell you that there is a chili which is known as the ghost pepper in the world. Now, why are we discussing this? Why is it in the news? That is something that you will learn during the course of this video. But before that, let's begin and you need to subscribe our channel and hit the bell notification because this is going to help you in getting latest updates about our uh, new uploads. And guys, this is our telegram group, which you can join from the link given in the description below. So let's first discuss the Karna Krishi project for agriculture advancement and then we will discuss about the ghost chili peppers because both of these are very important from your exam point of view. Apart from this, we will also be discussing about IDEX scheme of the Ministry of Defense. Apart from this, Global Education Summit took, also took place recently. So these are some of the questions that we are going to look into this video. So let's begin with this first question. So which state has launched this Krishi Karn project for agricultural advancement? Kerala, Punjab, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka out of which Kerala is the right answer. So you can memorize this Krishi Karna from K. Although Karnataka also has a K but this much you can easily remember that this Krishi Karna was launched by Kerala, not Karnataka, okay? Now let's uh, know this Krishi Karna project in, uh, de in detail. So this is basically a joint initiative of National Society for Agriculture, Horticulture, Agricultural Horticulture Sustainability Foundation and Core 3 Innovations. Now this project has been launched to promote high-tech agricultural practices in order to allow farmers to perform farm activities all the year without any negative impact of the climate change. So what kind of high-tech agricultural practices that this project aims to provide to the farmers? Basically, the agricultural practices like polyhouses. So these polyhouses are like the greenhouses wherein plants are grown in controlled climatic conditions. So these are uh, the polyhouses that will be set up under this Krishi Karna project. Now apart from the polyhouses, there are other techniques also that will be promoted under this project that we will learn. But first, let's look at the things, the statements that are there on this slide. The next thing is that the cultivation of long beans, tomatoes, salad, cucumber, capsicum, chilies and leafy vegetables will take place at the mini poly houses. And guys, so, uh, the cost of setting up of one poly house is rupees 2.35 lakhs in the state. Okay, so 2.35 lakh is the cost of setting up one poly house in the state of Kerala. Okay. The next point is very important. The innovations in the project are made by Anish and Raj, who is an agronomist at Core 3, and he has also won the Kerala's Best High Tech Farmer Award. Guys, this news and this project is very important from your agriculture point of view, from ESI also, because this is also going to have an impact on the social life of farmers because digitization, mechanization and technical innovation in agriculture is obviously going to have a, have a social implication as well. So do listen to me very carefully and prepare this Krishi Karna project thoroughly. Do not just think that this is a state project, therefore it is less relevant or less important. No guys, state projects are also very important. However, it depends upon the intensity and the purpose of the project and also the work done under the project. Now, let's know, uh, discuss something about the uh, techniques that will be adopted by the organizations under this Krishi Karna project. But let's first look at this picture. So this is a poly house. This is a greenhouse and a poly house. This is one and the same thing. So here under the controlled conditions, these plants are grown. Now under the project, this SAHS will be promoting agricultural and gardening practices. Sustainability Foundation 
will be promoting sustainable development and core three innovations will provide support to the farms to a greater extent. So this support will be in the form of technology and other kinds of support as well. The next is a poly house will be developed for supporting farming in controlled climatic conditions. So poly house here is the star of this project. This is the major technique that is being adopted under this Krishi Karna project so that the adverse climatic conditions and this rapid climate change do not have an adverse impact on the agriculture. That is the main purpose of this project. So that was all about this Krishi Karna project. Okay, now let's discuss about the ghost pepper. So Raja Mircha belongs to which state? Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Kerala, Nagaland, Tamil Nadu, it is from Nagaland. Now this Raja Mircha or the King Chili is also known as Bhut this Bhut Jaloka and Ghost Pepper. It got its uh, GI tag in 2008. Then why is it in the news? Because it was exported to London. Now this is the first time that uh, this chili from the northeastern region was exported to London. So this is a major step towards promoting the agricultural exports in the northeastern region. That side is very important. Now this Raja Mircha is among the top five hottest chilies of the world. So do remember this thing. Okay? Apart from this, there is nothing much that you need to know about this Raja Mircha. Moving on to the next question, which organization has launched the AI for all initiative for creating a basic understanding of artificial intelligence for everyone in India? This is an important uh, I would say project that has been launched by an organization, a private organization in India. So GE, Intel, Microsoft, Facebook, Amazon Web Services are in the options out of which Intel is the right answer. So what does Intel aim to do under this project? Basically this AI for all is a four hours program under which awareness regarding artificial intelligence, how to use that artificial intelligence, what are the benefits and what is the applicability of AI in the lives of ordinary people. That is something that will be taught under this uh, AI for all initiative or program. So this is going to uh, be held in two parts. One part will be AI appreciation and second part will be AI awareness. Every citizen, be it senior citizen, be it housemakers, be it homemakers, be it children, parents, everyone in India can participate in this AI for all initiative because this is going to create awareness about the uses of AI and the applicability of AI in the daily lives. So that is all about this initiative. National AI policy that Niti Aayog is developing is also based on the same principle, AI for all. In order to promote AI, the leverage the use of AI in the daily lives, the Niti Aayog is also preparing a national policy on artificial intelligence. Now guys, that was all about this news, but I have a question for you. Recently, these two organizations signed MOU with Science and Engineering Research Board of India. Can you tell me that under which scheme of CERC do these two organizations sign the MOU with CERC in order to promote research? So I'm also telling you the purpose of this MOU. In order to promote research, this MOU was signed between these two organizations. And also I'm giving you another hint that the scheme in question aims to promote industry and government partnership for research. Okay, industry and government both are collaborating in order to find solutions to the emerging problems. So in order to do research, 
this scheme was launched wherein industry and government are participating as we have seen here serb and these two organizations industry and the government are collaborating so you have to just name the scheme and i have taught you that scheme so i expect all of you to answer it correctly okay moving on to this next question recently department of defense production ministry of defense has extended innovations for De defense excellence a central sector scheme with an outlay of 498.80 crores for the next 5 years from 2021 to 2022 to 25 to 26 the itex aims to provide financial support to nearly 300 startups msme individual innovators and about 20 partner incubators through defense innovation organization itex is funded and managed by the defense innovation organization which was formed as a non profit organization uh, for this purpose only under which section of the companies act 2013 is the bio registered so this is the question for you guys under which section of the companies act 2013 is this bio registered 22 13 11 10 out of 10 and 8 out of these options the right answer is option e is under section 8 of companies act 2013 this dio is registered so guys do remember that this section 8 is for npos only non profit organizations in india are registered under this section 8 theek hai ab from now onwards you won't get confused if it is an npo and such a question is asked from you that under which section of companies act is this organization located then your answer should be straight forwardly the section 8 okay now let's discuss about this idex as we have seen that it has got an extension of 5 years by the government of india and we are also going to discuss about this defense innovation organization so this is the outlay for 5 years and this is a central sector scheme i hope that all of you know the meaning of this central sector scheme basically completely the scheme is funded by the central government central sponsored schemes are the schemes that are partially sponsored by the center and partially by the state so this is completely sponsored by the uh, central government ministry of defense this much is the outlay for the next 5 years this much is the tenure so if the question comes that for how many years or till which year is this idex scheme extended then you should know that for 5 years or 25 to 26 is the answer purpose kya hai to provide financial support to nearly these many organizations and incubators in order to have innovation in the defense sector so that is the basic purpose which is uh, clearly coming out from the name itself the next point here is that it is funded and managed by this dio and we have already seen it is registered under section 8 of companies act idex was launched in 2018 for modernization of the defense industry remember the year of launch now let's know what are the activities allowed to defense innovation organization or what activity does this defense innovation organization do first it is it sets up or manages the idex network in the form of partner incubators so basically it partners with incubators incubators are the organizations that mentor and that we can say ha huh, mentor the startups so it creates and manages the network of idex in the form of partner incubators then if the idex if this diu is connected with the incubator and incubators are connected with the startup then this is the whole chain which is connected to this idex network itself next is communicating with innovators startups technology centers of msmes through partner incubator so see it is the chain dio incubators then startups or the msmes ye ise batata hai and this this so this is how they connect with each other okay 
organizing various challenges hackathons to shortlist potential technologies and entities for defense and aerospace use that is the precise reason for which idex was launched to have innovation in the production techniques of defense and aerospace uh, goods or weapons or machinery whatever it is interfacing with the services about key innovative technologies and encouraging their adoption into the defense establishment with su uh, suitable assistance so after acknowledging the technology after identifying and developing the technology the this dio also provides support to the defense services so that they can easily adopt that technology as well so that were the activities allowed to defense innovation organization now let us see that who is eligible to have a grant under this uh, under this idex scheme grant provide karne ke liye hi this idex has been launched this uh, the idex purpose is to provide financial support to the startups msmes individual incubators etc in order so that they can create technology so who is eligible to get the financial support there is a different criteria for startups individuals and there is a different uh, criteria for incubator so let's first see the startups wala criteria then we will move on to the criteria of incubators so the grant me mechanism under the idex scheme is named as support for prototype and research kick start spark is the short form or acronym do remember the sparks full form next is startups should be recognized by dpiit department of promotion for internal industry and internal trade any indian company should be incorporated under the companies act will become eligible for this grant an msme should be defined and registered under the msme act 2006 individual innovators are also encouraged to apply research and academic institutions can use this category to apply because they do not fall under the msme or companies category so they fall under this individual innovators category and if they want to apply then they can use this category to apply in this idex challenge or the scheme i hope you have understood it these are very basic eligibility criteria and fortunately there is no data that you need to remember it's just the basic uh, statements basic uh, basic requirement for the companies and the msmes okay now let's have a look at the incubators as well so the first is that incubator should be registered in india as a legal entity in public private or public private partnership mode and it should have received establishment or grant support from a ministry department of government in the past so this is the requirement next is the incubator must have been in operation for a minimum of 3 years so here data comes and your responsibility to memorize that data also comes so 3 years minimum uh, uh, operational duration should be there before application for affiliation with the dio and experience of having supported at least 25 startups it should have successfully incubated at least 5 startups in the past 3 years it should have at least 25 mentors for startups affiliated with it at least 5 of them should be relevant to defense and aerospace domain experience of having run sector focused accelerator programs in at least two sectors with investable startups having come out of each of them experience of having partnered with academia and research sector extensive corporate investor academic vendor mentor and government relationship to support startups so the incubator should have this kind of extensive network so that it can support startups so that was the eligibility criteria for incubators which is a bit lengthy in comparison to the eligibility criteria for startups but i hope that there is nothing that you could not understand in this idex platform and if there is anything then you can always ask me in the comment section below now let's move on to the last question of the day which country co-hosted the global education summit 2021 with uk kenya india france singapore australia so the right answer is kenya so guys this is the british prime minister boris johnson and he is the kenyan president and this is the 
name uhuru kenyatta so from kenya his surname is coming out uhuru kenyatta so he is the kenyan president and he is the prime minister of uk global education summit financing gpe global partnership for education 2021 to 2025 was the summit that recently took place in london in this summit us 4 billion dollars were raised from the uh, donors for this global partnership for education gpe aims to raise 5 billion uh, us dollar over the next 5 years to enable up to 175 million children to learn and help get 88 million more girls and boys in school by 2025 UK has pledged the highest amount of to GPE at US dollar 600 million last month G7 pledged 2.7 US dollar to GPE so all these amounts are going to GPE GPE is such a beautiful and amazing concept that everyone is going towards GPE is contributing a lot towards GPE now what is this let's discuss that Acha, before that, you also need to know that 19 heads of states and governments committed to spend at least 20% of national budgets on education. This is an important statement, guys. So, this pledge is part of the political agenda propagated by the Kenyan president. Remember this thing. And over the next five years, by 2025, these 19 countries. would accumulate us dollar 196 billion in education financing so the basic purpose of this political agenda was to enhance the financing in education sector businesses private foundations and development banks have mobilized more than 1 billion us dollars to partner countries alongside their investments from gp so business and private foundations have also given 1 billion us dollar aid to their partner countries in addition to the grants that they were getting from the gpe that is global partnership for education the business community and private foundations announced more than 100 million dollar at the summit so they have pledged this much amount towards gp now gp is what gp is the largest global fund solely dedicated to transforming education in lower income countries it was launched in 2002 so basically it was launched in 2002 that you need to know and this is the largest ever group that is created for transforming the education particularly in low and middle income countries board chair of this gp is julia gillard who was the former prime minister of australia so this is just for your information purpose at present gpe works in 76 lower income countries and gp 2025 is basically the target the agenda of this global partnership for education in order to uh, achieve sdg 4 by 2025 sdg 4 is for quality education guys do remember all the sustainable development goals along with their numbers that is important so that was all for today i hope that you have enjoyed the video and if you have then do not forget to share it like it thank you so much for watching the video